Flooding in China is so serious this year? Why is it so? The subtropical high pressure system over the western North Pacific was strong this year, said Song Lian Chun, a meteorologist with the National Climate Center. Its intersection with cold air has led to continuous heavy rainfall in the Yangtze River basin this summer. Tens of millions of people across China have been affected by torrential rains that caused floods and landslides and battered cities and villages in dozens of provinces. It is the worst flooding to hit China in decades. Heavy rains have lashed 27 of the country's 31 provinces since June, affecting more than 37 million people and leaving 141 dead or missing, the Ministry of Emergency Management said on Monday. Economic losses have been estimated at 86 billion yuan, 12.3 billion US dollars, so far. By comparison, the Great Flood of 1993 along the Mississippi and Missouri rivers and their tributaries, one of the most costly and devastating floods seen in the United States, resulted in about 50 deaths and 54,000 people being evacuated. Economic losses were put at 15 billion US dollars to 20 billion US dollars. If you find this video to be informative, consider to give the channel a subscribe. I want to hear from you. So leave a comment, like and share. China's flood started in the south, in the Guangxi-Zhuang region and Gizhu province, in June. Heavy rains have since wreaked havoc across large swathes of the country, including Jiangxi province in the east, Anhui in the southeast and Hubei in the center, with the emergency response for flood control raised to its highest level in some places. The scale of the disaster is vast, with the water level of 433 rivers going above the flood control line since June, and 33 of them at record high levels, according to the Ministry of Water Resources. In some of the hardest hit areas such as Jiangxi, levees have collapsed and houses have been destroyed, reminding stranded locals of the devastating floods in 1998 that killed more than 3,000 people and left 15 million homeless. We're on higher ground so we did not expect the floods to be so serious, but the water rushed in and I had to take a car to my shop to pack up, said Ping Ping, a porcelain shop owner in Jingdezhen, Jiangxi. I had only ever seen floods on the news. That night, the flood water came up to my knees at first, then there was a swell of water again, she said. The Jingdezhen government must think about this problem. We hear that there are floods every year, so shopkeepers with experience usually know when to prepare, she said, questioning why they were so unprepared this summer. Why are this year's floods so severe? China has perennial flooding in summer but a combination of climate reasons and human behavior have contributed to a longer than usual duration and incessant rainfall in some regions. The subtropical high pressure system over the western North Pacific was strong this year, said Song Lian Chun, a meteorologist with the National Climate Center. Its intersection with cold air has led to continuous heavy rainfall in the Yangtze River basin. Another reason was global warming, he said. We cannot say a single extreme weather event is directly caused by climate change, but seeing it over the long term, global warming has led to an increase in the frequency and intensity of extreme weather events, Song said. From 1961 to 2018, there has been an increase in extremely heavy rainfall events in China, according to the China Climate Change Blue Book, 2019. And since the mid-1990s, the frequency of extreme rainfall has increased dramatically. Over the past 60 years, the number of days of heavy rain has gone up by 3.9% a decade, according to Song. Aside from the rainfall, human behavior has also contributed to the severity of the floods in China. Fan Xiao, a geologist with the Sichuan Geology and Mineral Bureau, said decades of land reclamation and dam building on nearby rivers had reduced the area and volume of Poyang Lake, the country's largest freshwater lake which is located in Jiangxi. Some 1,300 square kilometers, 502 sq miles, of land was reclaimed there from 1954 to 1998, which caused the surface area of the lake to shrink from 5,160 square kilometers, 1,992 sq miles, to 3,860 square kilometers, 
1,490 sq miles, according to a study by University of Alabama geographer David Shankman. Environmental volunteer John Wenbin said he had investigated illegal land reclamation activities at Twilin, another lake in the province. He said some of the projects around the lake were still underway last year, even though they had been ordered to stop by environmental inspectors from Beijing. There are many similar cases, Zhang said, adding that Twilin Lake had also shrunk in size, reducing its storage capacity for floodwaters. Thank you for watching the video.